Hello world and welcome to this video about Photolab 8 and I'm going to make this part of a little series. I'll put it together in a watch list. I'm going to call it short and sharp and this first one is all about the curves tool. Now if you've watched my videos at all in the last year you've no doubt seen me suggest that I thought that that was a, a space for improvement in Photolab so nice enough. Actually there's been some really great adaptation of the curves tool so let's like I said short and sharp whole idea here is get in get out let you watch what you want to watch um, and choose the ones that interest you so let's jump in and take a look at this image and this new curves tool here we are in the wonderful world of Photolab and let's dive straight in and look at that tone curve so this image is of a physical theater group this was a promo shot done before a show and let's take a look at what we can do with the tone curve. I should say to start with what, what you're seeing here, I've got the image which has just had optical corrections plus some white balance adjustment. And then I've got a virtual copy of that. And then I've got, this is kind of where it got to in the end after some editing, both here and in Nick. But let's just jump back here and take a look at that tone curve. So if I come up here to the tone curve, let's take a peek flick it on and first of all we can see at the top here we've got some presets and related to the presets we've also got something that I can show you which is the a live preview of what you're mousing over so as you look at each of these you can see what impact it'll have before you click on it which will be a real time saver fantastic new feature now next of course coming down here we've got something else new we've got our RGB master channel our G and B. You can see as I hit on the R, G, and B that there's some little color theory helpers here, letting you know that if you're on the red channel, if you raise, you're going to be going towards red. If you lower, you're going to be going towards cyan. With G, raise towards green, lower towards magenta. So some little, some little helpers there. And also, sort of to me, one of the biggest bits of this whole update is we've got the luminance channel on the side here. And I'm going to circle back around and talk more about what difference that makes. Why do we care? Why is that helpful? Really big, really helpful addition. Now let me just go ahead and grab a, let's see, a light contrast luma preset, just to show you some of the other bits. So you can see here that that's done a bit of a luma curve through there. That makes good sense. And here we've got some points set. And this can help me talk about one of the other new features, which is these boxes here and here. And what we're seeing is that this dot right here that I've now selected is on this linear scale. It was 61, you know, on that scale of 0 to 255. So it was representing 61. And what have we done with it? We've moved it down to 55. If I look up here at this one, we've selected 189. What have we done with it? We've taken it up to 199. And this just, this is fantastic because it gives this granular control over where things are. You can raise things by two, three, four points at a time really delicately which makes a big difference. This is a powerful tool. It often needs really subtle tweaks. So this is absolutely amazing. Now we've always had these ones down here and here. This would raise your black point a bit. This would set your black point in. Similarly, we can set the white point in or we can lower what can be you know, maximum white in the image. So we've always had those bits, but these, these new boxes are absolutely fantastic. Now, if I go ahead and reset that, another new feature that you've no doubt spotted already is this tone picker. And this lets us edit the tones right on the image so we can click and drag. If I come over here and I grab this skin, and I'm just gonna drag that down a little touch and maybe I'll grab this color here and just drag that down a little touch even more. But you can just respond to what you're seeing. And of course, you can always edit them. See, this one's selected. You can see it. If I wanted to select the other one, I can come up here and select it. Then I can drag it 
or I can use these adjustments right here to edit it as I'd like. So this started out as 175 and I've darkened it a little as 170. Maybe I find that's a little too much. Maybe I want to put it on 172. Just have it be a really delicate little adjustment. So great feature. Now I'm just going to press escape to deselect my tool. Of course, I could also click here since my mouse is here, but I just want to highlight the fact that escape always works to get rid of tools, just like that. Um, we've got gamma down here, which if I reset things and I click on my gamma, you can see it's just shifting the, shifting the base curve. I don't use gamma huge, but every now and again, it, it comes in handy. It's good that it's there. Now, what about this difference between RGB master and luminance channel? Why is that a big deal? Let me show you an example. So I'm on the first image. I'll choose RGB master and I'll come down here to medium contrast RGB, meaning it's doing it on the RGB master channel. So that's Kapow. You can see how extremely saturated everything's gotten. And that's one of the sort of hallmarks of doing these kinds of adjustments on the RGB master, especially when darkening things, it saturates them more, and which can create a, a, a quite an intensity. So let's now come over across to my virtual copy and let's do the same thing, only let's this time choose medium contrast Luma. So this has done that on the Luma channel instead. And now let's look at the difference. If I come up here to compare, and I'm going to compare against my master image. So that's all good, that's already set up. So I'm on the Luma channel, and this is what the RGB looks like. Luma channel, RGB. And let's just zoom in, bring that down. Look at the skin tones and the greens. So RGB, see how it's gone quite oversaturated? Luma much more tame. RGB Luma. So in my opinion, having the flexibility to work with Luma or RGB Master is absolutely fantastic. So that is all for short and sharp video number one. Remember, this is going to be a playlist. So check out the playlist, see some of the other videos on some of the other new features. Again, I'll try to keep them as short and to the point as I can. And until next time, take care and I will talk again soon. Bye-bye.